Well, of course, the issue of Brexit. People will have seen that we published the referendum bill already. It's an issue that is coming to Parliament early in the year, it's something that we need to have on our statute books so that we can, when the Prime Minister makes the decision to call the referendum in the United Kingdom, be ready with a mirror image of the legislation in the UK to regulate voting in Gibraltar. That's going to be chronologically, perforce, therefore, one of the first things to deal with. What do you think will happen? Because we've seen in the opinion polls how the gap between the people that want to stay in and want to leave the EU is quite small. Well, I think you know me for long enough, Stephen, to know that I'm not one of those politicians who likes to do crystal ball gazing in particular about a result that will be empirically announced by a returning officer when the time comes. Uh, what I will tell you is that Gibraltar will play an important part of the campaign, ensuring that people who have not made up their minds how they're going to vote and who know Gibraltar and love Gibraltar realize the potential dangers of a Brexit for Gibraltar and, and that they should calibrate that as part of their decision making when the time comes to vote. And in Gibraltar itself, of course, there will also have to be a campaign. We can't take the Gibraltar result for granted. I think it's important to explain benefits and downsides of, of uh, what the European Union means for us today and what it can mean in the future. You said in the election campaign, and it's also in your manifesto, that you want to update the Gibraltar constitution and you're going to start talks with the British government to try and achieve that. Can we expect to see you begin that process soon in 2016? Yes, but it's not something that I'm going to do on my own. This is something for a select committee of the House and for a wider constitutional committee, which may include people from outside the House, as we analyse for ourselves in Gibraltar where we think the Constitution should be going. Look, the Constitution f still feels new in many respects, but it's now a decade old in 2016. We need to make sure that we keep it fresh, that we are at the vanguard of constitutional development, always in the context of staying on the side of the line that preserves British sovereignty in perpetuity. We're not looking for independence, but we are looking for delisting at the United Nations, and we are looking to ensure that that constitution is reviewed regularly. It may be that we all end up deciding that we don't need to make any changes, or that the changes that we need to make relate to the paragraphs that deal with uh, human rights and fundamental rights rather than the political parts of the constitution. But that process is not finished until it's done, and we, don't, we can't just assume that everything should stay as it is without doing the exercise together as a community as a parliament and with the wider constitutional select committee. You also said that you would be reactivating the Committee on Parliamentary and Democratic Reform. Is that also a priority for you this year? You'll see that happening almost immediately as the part of the, the architecture of the new parliament. It's something that uh, I want Joseph Garcia to be leading on. He's the person with responsibility uh, for these matters, and I'll be asking him uh, to help me to reconstitute that committee very quickly uh, in January, February. And in terms of relations with Spain, a new government, of course, will have to emerge in Madrid sooner or later. Can we expect to see you taking the first step towards trying to re-establish dialogue? Well, look, we know constitutionally the 13th of January is the date on which uh, the first opportunity for investiture by Mr. Rajoy, who came first of all of the party leaders in Spain, uh, will fall. You know, 13 could be uh, lucky for some or unlucky for others. We'll see what happens after that. Gibraltar is ready. It has already taken the first step of saying we remain ready to engage in dialogue under the trilateral forum, uh, depending on the result of the votes in the Spanish Cortes, in the Spanish Parliament, there may or may not be a driving hand in the, on the teller of the Spanish government that may be open to returning to that trilateral forum or not. Well, so far we focused on international issues, but what about on the domestic front? What are you most looking forward to in 2016? Well, of course, there is the issue of the educational establishments we're going to be operating. That is going to require a lot of planning to make sure that we get it right. And I think we need to do that in a way that ensures that the least possible disruption. So there is a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to be doing. We've got a lot of ideas in the party as to how we would achieve that. Now it's a question of translating that into the work of the civil service and the contractors that are engaged to do that in a way that our children suffer the least possible disruption. The power station and the LNG facility, I suppose that that will start to manifest itself in the next 12 months? Very much so. I expect that we'll be seeing the, the process of DPC and the other reports that are necessary as plans are finalised and work starts being put in place. But 
uh, it, this is a hugely important project for Gibraltar. The government has taken its responsibilities to deliver a project which is safe and insulates us against all of the potential issues that we could see for the next three generations in a way that delivered for Gibraltar. I am very much looking forward to seeing the functionality of the new power station and the new fuel be a reality very shortly.